Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of my rally series. Today we're going to be testing the Bentley Continental Super Sport. So welcome back to the rally series guys today we're taking another vehicle down my custom made rally track We had great success last week with the DeLorean It was our fastest two-wheel drive vehicle so far, which I was really really impressed with But I've been looking for a vehicle that we can use to knock off that Lamborghini in first place And another vehicle I have had great success with as a road vehicle is this the Bentley Continental Super Sport this thing is a absolute on-road beast and I'm hoping it's going to be equally as good off-road and possibly knock the Lamborghini off its first place. Now the Bentley here, it has a big old uh, W16 engine in there, so a nice big engine. It's already quite high on PI so it shouldn't take a lot to get it up to the top of S1 class and of course it is all-wheel drive, that is the big factor here. But the thing weighs two and a half tons, so I'm hoping with all that weight pressing down on the wheels, this thing should be able to get a lot of traction and hopefully put down a good lap time. Now, if you haven't seen this series before, basically what we do each week, I take a different vehicle down a custom-built rally track. Um, there are certain limitations that I will run through as we build the vehicle and as we are doing our runs, but each vehicle gets three runs, and um, at the end we'll have a little look at the leaderboard and see how it stacks up to previous vehicle attempts. So the first job here is going to be building the Bentley. So let's go ahead and see what upgrades we can do to this thing. Now it's already near the top of A class so it shouldn't take a whole lot to get this thing up into S1 class. Um, we can go ahead and swap in the V12. Now if the vehicles allow the stock engine to stay in place uh, if the PI allows it then we will keep the stock engine otherwise we'll go for engine swaps most vehicles um, have to have an engine swap but um, I'm hoping that we can keep the W16 in because it's got a lot of low down grunt so uh, hopefully that's good we could go ahead and convert to rear wheel drive but the rules of the series dictate that all vehicles have to stay in their stock drivetrain. This thing is already all wheel drive anyway so I don't want to mess with that. Then in uh, aero and appearances uh, we've got a few little things we can do in here. We can add a splitter and a few canards and we can go for a bigger rear wing or remove the rear wing altogether if we wish. Now I'm actually going to just leave the stock rear wing there. Um, and I'm not going to go for a splitter. We're building a rally car, so I don't want this thing to be any lower than it already is. Now, all the vehicles will be fitted with rally tyres, uh, with the rally tyre compound, the off-road tyre compound, or the off-road race tyre compound if they cannot have the rally tyre compound fitted. Now, the Lamborghini, being an off-road vehicle, could only have the off-road tyre compound, uh, the, the race tyre, so... That's probably why it had a lot more traction. Is it a little bit unfair? Yes, it is a little bit unfair, but that's the rules of the series that I've made and we're going to stick with it. So we're going to fit the off-road tyre compound. That's going to give us some traction on road and a lot more traction off-road. We'll go with the biggest tyres we can. I'm going to keep the stock tyres. Um, we haven't actually changed any of the wheels. Uh, so I keep saying tyres, I mean wheels. We haven't actually changed any of the wheels on the cars in this series so I might make that a rule that we run with the stock wheels but if you're upgrading this yourself for a race you probably want to change up the wheels but there we go I'm just going to leave the stock wheels we're going to put in the six speed race transmission I think this thing has like a nine speed standard and um, if you guys follow me for a while then you'll know that I'm not really a fan of really high geared uh, vehicles I think four is plenty in a vehicle five at a stretch i'm willing to go to six uh, but when you start getting in seven eight nine ten that's just way too many gears especially for something like this what we're doing on a rally course there's only like two gears you need and that's usually third and fourth so um 
we'll uh, we'll stick it in there and uh, see what we can do. All the vehicles are going to be fitted with the rally diff since it is a rally track. Um, we'll go ahead and put on the off-road springs and dampers. That does lift the vehicle a little bit, not a lot, maybe about two inches. Um, but you know that's going to make some difference. I think this thing's going to be very good on the track. The water splashes might be the deciding factor if it can uh, get through the water splashes cleanly. I'm hoping the weight of the vehicle is going to help it there. However, we are going to do a little bit of weight reduction. This thing nearly weighs 5,000 pounds. So it's a heavy beast. We can take that down to uh, 3,800 with full rate weight reduction. And that's going to put us up into S1 class as well. So we're going to do that. Then engine upgrades. I'm just going to go ahead and slap in all the engine upgrades. Actually, what is this thing standard? So it's 700 horsepower standard. It's going to be well into the 1,000 horsepower region by the time we've got all the engine upgrades on. Um, but let's see what we can actually do. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, we're nearly up to 900 horsepower already. We've got two twin turbos. There it is, 1,000 horsepower. Um, it's not quite going to get to the very top of S1 class, but I'm going to call that close enough. 1,081 horsepower, 1,000 pound-feet of torque, 3,800 pounds, so it weighs, um, it weighs around, uh, I think it's almost two tons. Upgraded, we've got off-road springs and dampers. I'm going to do some tuning and paint the vehicle, and then we'll have three attempts at putting down a good lap time okay here we go for the bentley's first run i've got this nice racing green livery on this thing it reckons the vehicle can do 240 miles an hour so let's see if we can use some of that speed on the track now now this thing has a lot of weight so we got to get this thing slowed down very very early i slowed down very early there and still overshot the corner so controlling the vehicle's weight is going to be a massive factor in this but through these water splashes i feel the bentley is going to be very good yes it is now because this thing is a grand touring vehicle um, it is quite low it is quite stiff suspension even with the off-road springs and dampers this thing is not going to be having a nice time over the bumps so and it is also running quite wide in some of these corners because I'm not slowing down enough. But on the straight sections, hopefully that's where the Bentley will come good. This is typically a very bumpy section and the Bentley is having a little bit of trouble soaking those bumps up. A little bit of a twitch on the exit there. I'm into the trees, coming into the hairpin. This is definitely not a clean run. But that gives us two more runs to improve on this Bentley's time. Down this section is typically quite bumpy again but the Bentley soaking it up well coming into the two right handers now and then we're up the hill this is where the Bentley will come good it has plenty of grunt to get us up the hill almost 120 miles an hour there that's probably the fastest we've seen going up that hill and then we come on to this little section there's quite a nice little section towards the end here except for this horrible corner coming up I'm going to slow it down because I feel the Bentley is not going to have the turning to get through there at speed. But it has enough grunt to pull us out of the corner when we slow it down. A little bit too much oversteer through there. And oh, that was almost a spin out. We're at the two minute mark now. So I don't think we're going to beat the Lamborghini's run in this time. But hopefully on one of the next runs we can. Let's see what kind of time we can get coming down the hill and across the line at a 2 minute 15.269. That is going to beat the Audi Quattro's time from the first episode, which also did a 2.15, but that was a 4.9. So the Bentley literally two tenths of a second faster than the Audi Quattro Sport. Let's see if we can improve on that time. Um, you know, I did hit a tree. There was a few bits there where I was wide. I could uh, have been a little bit braver in places, but not a bad showing for the first run in the Bentley Continental. All right, here we go for the second run in 
the Bentley Continental. Let's see what we can do with this thing. I'm going to slow it down way early for this first corner up here. We saw that's where we overshot and I'm going to attempt not to crash into any trees. I'm going to break a little bit too early possibly, but I'd rather get slowed down for that corner than run wide. But on the next run, I think we're going to have to be a little bit braver. Now I'm going to slow it down for here so we don't run wide here, which we don't. That was beautiful through there. The Bentley just powers through the water, doesn't lose a lot of time, which is nice. Now let's get slowed down for this corner. We could could have been a little bit braver through there, possibly. I'm trying to learn where we can be brave in the Bentley. Now it's a little bit difficult because this thing has so much weight, you have to slow it down very, very early for the corners. You don't want to overshoot the corners, but at the same time, the brakes in the Bentley are very, very good. Now, through the bumpy section, I'm going to slow it down through there. We're going to keep the power down where we can, though. Coming into the hairpin, I'm going to leave it in third. We'll just take it nice and slow through there. Beautiful. That W16 is going to pull us out the corner. And then we're into the two right-handers. I'll get it slowed down for those. Whoops. A little bit too early into the corner there. But then we're on up to the hill. Let's see what the Bentley does up here. Again, we're up to 125 going up the hill there. That is pretty good, but we are a little bit wide on the exit. We could have been a little bit earlier on the brakes there, possibly. Now, this corner up here is horrible, but I feel like we can be quite brave in the Bentley. I'm going to change down to third. Hopefully, we can get a little bit of traction coming out. Now, don't spin out here. We've got a little bit of a drift going, but I'm just going to let off the throttle, and hopefully that should... Um, hopefully that should stop any oversteer we're already past the Lamborghini's lap time but let's see what we can do down the hill there we go across the line that is going to be a lot faster than our previous lap um, almost seven seconds faster a 209 uh, but we've got one more run it's going to be a tall order to shave off four seconds to beat that Lamborghini but let's see what we can do. That's already at a uh, podium position for the Bentley. I'd like this thing to be our fastest car. But I don't know. We'll just have to see what we can do. Alright, here we go. The Bentley Continental. Let's see what you can do, baby. There was areas where I could have been braver in the previous one. I did miss a couple of gear changes. So let's see what we can do. I'm just going to be flat out down here and then early braking was a little bit too late into uh, the turn there actually. That wasn't the braking, that was just me not turning early enough. We'll slow it down for this corner here, full lock into that corner. And then this section here. I'm going to keep it in third gear so we can get that power down early. Now, I might not be talking as much on this run. That's because I really want to beat the previous lap time. And I also want to beat that Lamborghini. It has been our podium vehicle since the second episode. So, I'd like to see that change. I'm hoping this Bentley here is going to do that. A little bit of braking going up the hill. Just to try and emit some of that uh, bounciness. Excuse me, I'm getting my words mixed up. Bentley does not soak up the bumps like the Lamborghini did, which makes it a little bit more uncontrollable. So we're just going to take it cautiously. I'm going to focus. I'm not even looking at the lap time at the moment. I'm going to go up the hill here. Let's see what we can do. Cresting the hill. Don't even know how fast we were there because I'm focusing on the run too much. Was a little bit wide on that exit though, could have been a little bit tidier through there, but that's how it goes. The Bentley is not the most controllable vehicle. Whoa, we nearly missed that checkpoint there, that wasn't very good. I think that has scuppered our chances, and hitting that motorbike was not good there. We are all over the place on the racing line there. I don't think this lap time is even going to be faster than our previous one, unfortunately. Let's see what we do down the hill here in third gear. A little bit of a drift going down the hill there. That was a little bit unfortunate. And unfortunately, no, it is not going to beat our previous lap time. 
which means our second run is going to be the fastest run for the Bentley Continental. Unfortunately, could not quite knock that Lamborghini off first position, but still a third place for the Bentley. Very impressive. But let's see how it compared to some of our other lap times. Well, there we have it. The 209.963 is going to put the Bentley Continental Supersport in third place. An impressive showing for the Bentley there. Still a podium finish, so I am very, very happy with this vehicle. If you are building this as a rally car, then it is a very solid choice to go for. Looks fantastic. Has the awesome W16 engine in there. And, of course, it's a Bentley. It's, it's just a cool vehicle to begin with. And takes third place above the Audi Quattro there, almost six seconds faster than the Audi Quattro. So if that doesn't tell you anything, then uh, it's be a world-renowned rally car. Um, but it is just three seconds slower than that Ford Focus. That thing was impressive. But still, the Lamborghini LM002 is our king to beat. And hopefully next week you can join us where my vehicle is going to knock that thing into the water. But I'll see you then. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Goodbye.